Okay, so there is one other guide that we need to do, and it is about a special type of one sample hypothesis testing, and this is called matched pairs. So remember, matched pairs is where we usually do like a before or after um, test, or where we are looking at, oh, like twin studies very often are matched pairs, or like your um, infomercial commercials where, you know, they've got some water repellent, um, thing so they cover half of a shirt in the uh, oh in the material and when they splash tomato juice on it or something it rolls off of one side and stains the other side of the shirt it's kind of those are all examples of match pairs where there's some one-to-one -one link between every single measurement so let's go ahead and kind of dive into this question and see how can we actually do match pairs testing now there's two ways that we can actually do it um, and they're but both of them kind of come up with the exact same answer. So let's go look at this one. So let's say in this study, the weights of young female anorexia patients was recorded before and after family therapy. Um, so if you actually want to look at the source, here it is. Um, so the directions were going to perform an appropriate significance test to determine whether or not weight gain was statistically significant. Okay, so we're going to click on the data button and we're going to copy it into our software package. So let's copy all of this. And we have therapy via pre-weight, therapy post the family intervention or the family therapy. And then this is post minus pre. Okay, so we are going to go to data. We'll import the data. We'll do it from the text file, clipboard, and we'll click OK. And yeah, we'll just overwrite it. All right, so I have my data in there. And what this is, is so this is how much, you know, somebody weighed before the therapy. This is somebody, how much somebody weighed after the therapy. And then this is kind of the difference in weight. Now you notice how some of these people gained weight, some people lost weight, but we're trying to see if weight gain is statistically significant so that we could say that maybe therapy actually helps uh, these patients uh, gain some weight. Okay, so we're going to use our software package to compute a numerical summary of the weight differences. Uh, and this one was actually already provided for you, went in and already did this difference. Now we could go into like Excel or something and take a difference of each of these. Uh, that's possible. Um, there's another way that we can do this as well. So if we go into data and we go into manage active manage variables in an active data set, what we can do is we can do what's called computing a new variable. And what we are going to do is we're going to do post, oh, sorry, post. Uh, minus pre and we're going to name this thing um, subtract or maybe we'll just say difference we'll just say diff and I'll click OK and now when I go look at my data set oh sorry wrong one click over here I have therapy post and this in the post minus pre that's the one that I did and then this is the difference one and if you notice it's the exactly the same so I'm able to subtract those from each other and what I'm looking at I'm not looking at the individual weights from one group to the next I'm looking to see what was the difference based upon the therapy okay so now that I've got that we can perform our significance test and we need to uh, choose a null and alternative. Note how it has the little a for the alternative, especially in social sciences, you'll see that. So the baseline assumption is that they are equal to zero. So we've got equal to zero, uh, or not equal to zero, so we don't want this last one. Equal to zero, equal to zero, equal to zero. Okay. Now what we want to do is we want to say, is this mu d greater than zero? Do they weigh more after this therapy? And remember, we did this post weight minus the pre weight. Okay. So once we do that, it's actually really easy what we need to do. We can just go to our statistics means, and we actually have two options. We can do a paired t-test or we can do a single sample t-test. So if I go ahead and click on paired t-test, uh, you can do the first variable and then the second variable. So I can do the first as if I did something like post and then pre and we want to do greater than zero and we'll test out a we'll do a 95 percent confidence interval or uh, confidence level it's not told us so if it's not told your default is like 95. And i'll go ahead and click ok and it gives me this if i'm doing a paired t-test now take a look and see what if i do if a one sample t-test with just the difference so now i can go to statistics means single sample t and i just want to look at that we'll do that difference one 
we'll have the null hypothesis is zero, we'll have this is greater than, and once again, 0.95 and click OK. OK. Now, if I do this and we look at these numbers, they are identical. Uh, there is uh, really nothing different except how they talk about the alternative hypothesis, where it's this true difference in means is greater than zero. Okay, so we were able to do that, and our test statistic is right here. So basically, what we want to know is that we can look at this as, as either either or. So we can grab this as a paired t test where we just we put in the post and then and the pre, or if we can run it as a one sample t test where we just shove in the difference in the um, in the weights from before and after. Okay, so let's go ahead and copy our t put it in there and we're going to grab our p so we're going to grab this guy copy and paste and interpret so the p-value provides strong evidence against the null hypothesis weight gain of anorexia patients treated using family therapy was statistically significant so this is kind of just a pared down version if we were to continue this and actually like write out a full conclusion we'd also want to include our confidence interval where we think that we're 95 percent confident that um that the true uh mean the, the true difference in means is at least 4.8 like pounds where after family therapy these patients gained about you know about five pounds and then we'd also want to include in our whole um, APA format for reporting our statistically significant remember we would do T then the degrees of freedom would be 16 I would have to say equals this would be this 4.79 and then we do p-value equals 0 0.0001 or because it's so small we can just do p-value is less than 0 0.001 and where alpha is equal to 0 0.05 remember that's the APA format of how to report our significant findings and that's that's about it so let's double check and see how we did we can submit this guy and we were able to get our correct values so that's how you handle this special case of one sample testing where we are actually doing matched pairs so good luck and i hope that this helped you on the guide